some of you are having questions about how to find the zeros and what that means. So I'm going to go through a few different examples of what we're talking about if we're talking about finding the zero, zeros and kind of what, what are we doing if that's what we're doing. So first we're going to look at a linear example. This is something you might have seen last semester. If I have f of x is equal to 2x plus 7 and I want to find the zeros then what I'm doing is I need to figure out what number to put in for x so that this whole thing spits out a zero. So some of you are thinking well shouldn't I just be able to put in zero? So let's try that and see if it works. Well, let's see, f of zero means I need to put in a zero wherever I see an x. Two times zero is zero. But then I have to add seven to it because I didn't zero out the seven because it's being added rather than multiplied. Zero plus seven is seven. So it doesn't work. To just put in zero. Rats. Instead, we have to solve or x when it's equal to zero, so we can figure out what x we need to put in and work backwards. So instead, if we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 7, we have to see what happens when we have 2x plus 7 equals zero. That'll tell us what number we need for x in order for the output to be zero. So I can go through and I can use some different algebra moves. If I subtract seven from both sides, that makes a zero pair here. Then I'd have two x is equal to negative seven. I need to know what just one x is. So I'm going to divide both sides by two. Two divided by two is one. So I get that x is equal to negative seven halves. And so this is the number that I can put into my function to get zero out. And when I try that, Remember my function is 2x plus 7, so I'd have 2 times negative 7 halves plus 7. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, so I'd have negative 14 over 2 plus 7. Negative 14 over 2 would be negative 7 plus 7 and that would indeed equal zero. So the zero of this function, the number I can put in to get zero out, is negative seven halves. To get that number, I took the function and I set it equal to zero, and then I solved it for x. And what this means is, if I were to graph this function, on a little coordinate plane like this. Here's my x, here's my y. 
negative 7 halves, which is negative 3 and a half, is about here. And this point would be negative 7 halves on the x and 0 on the y. And that point would be on my graph. And I happen to know the y-intercept as well because I found that up here by finding out when what my output is when my input is 0. And also because this is in slope-intercept form and the intercept would be 7. So up here-ish at the point 0, 7, I put in 0, I get out 7. That would be my y-intercept. I put in negative 7 halves, I get out 0. That would be my x-intercept. So those are two different kinds of zeros. And since this is linear, it would be a line. And that would be a sketch of the graph of this function using the zeros.